heart of darkness. Whose heart it is which is filled with darkness? One person, one race, one tribe, entire humanity, world. Whose heart it is which is filled with darkness? We will come to know in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. And today's novella of discussion under British literature is Heart of Darkness. It was published serially as well as in book form. Serially in the year 1899 in Blackwoods magazine, whereas in book form in the year 1902. Author is Joseph Ponerad, who is a Polish-British novelist who lived from 1857 to 1924. His name at birth, because he originally belonged from Poland, was Joseph Theodore Konrad Korzeniewski. But when he became an English citizen, citizen, that is a British citizen, he changed his name to an easy Joseph Konrad. Okay. The genre of Heart of Darkness is it is a colonial literature. Yes, today we will understand about colonialism, about the scramble of Africa, about the quest into the jungles of Africa, of human greed and power, okay? That will be colonial literature. And also quest literature. What is quest literature? Basically, a hero is in search or in quest of an object or a person. And during this journey, he gets many experiences which helps him to discover himself, to discover the nature of the world. That is called quest literature. Antagonist of this novel is Kurds. Remember his name, Kurds, okay? Narrator is a person from the novel named Marlow. And also there is an unnamed first person narrator. Okay, so two narrators are there. Setting is, of course, Europe will be a setting, but primarily it will be Belgian Congo in Africa in the late 19th century. Now, what is Belgian Congo in Africa? A part of Africa which was colonized by Belgium. You know Belgium, right? A country in Europe. And Belgium actually colonized this Congo very, very brutally, notoriously murdering people, just, you know, being there for money, that's it, okay? So this novel or novella is a critique of European colonial rule in Africa, but primarily it focuses on the damage that colonization does to the soul of white colonizers. Do you understand? Here we will understand how colonialism affects white colonizers. That is what Heart of Darkness will portray. Okay, with this, let's start with Heart of Darkness. The first setting will be Thames River, England. Marlowe is the first person to be introduced. Marlowe is a man of the sea. At the start of the novel, he is chatting with his friends sitting on a ship in the Thames River. There are a total number of five men on this ship, including who? Marlowe. Then there is a narrator. Then there are three more people. There is a director of a company. There are more people. Okay, so total five people are sitting there. Marlowe is a man of the sea. He is chatting with these people. He begins his story about his journey, you know, few years back into the Belgian Congo, Africa. How he became the captain of this steamboat, which worked for an ivory trading company there. And how he met a man named Kurtz. With this, let's start with Marlowe's story, which means let's go to flashback, okay? When Marlowe was a little boy, he would often look at the world map, the globe or the map on the paper, and he would dream. He was curious. He was curious to travel. That's how Marlowe will become a man of the sea. The blank spaces on the map, you know what were these blank spaces? Africa, the land which was not discovered till then. Africa. The blank spaces on the map fascinated him. The theme is ambition, curiosity and ambition. Marlowe's aunt, okay, a very social aunt who had influence, she helped him get a job on a steamship on the Congo River in Africa. Why? His aunt believed in the beauty of the European colonization of Africa. She felt it was a way to earn as well as a very noble way to civilize the savage. 
So these people would call Africans savage and they thought that colonialism will actually civilize these savage Africans. So to get his job, Marlowe first travels from his hometown to his company's headquarters in a European city, a city which Marlowe describes as wiped, whited sepulcher, whited sepulcher. Sepulcher is like a hollow tomb. And then he goes to Africa up the Congo River to take his post as the pilot or the captain of his ship. Okay, so with this, let's go to Africa. As he leaves Europe and enters Africa, Marlowe witnesses disgrace in the form of, first, the waste littered by the whites, the brutality of the whites towards the Africans, critically ill Africans left alone to die, the ill Africans working on the new railroads, a French warship firing into the forest for no reason. French were allies of Belgium's, okay? So, you know, they are just uh, firing into the forest, into the African forest. Here the theme is hollowness of colonialism, okay? Now, understand, after entering Africa, he has to reach to his ship. His ship basically will be at the company's central station on the river. This company, which has hired him, has three stations on the Congo River. First is outer station, second center station, third inner station. First, Marlowe reaches company's outer station. What happens here? Marlowe meets the company's chief accountant here. This chief accountant is an extremely groomed, smart man and Marlowe likes him instantly. The chief accountant mentions a remarkable man to Marlowe who works for the company. This man's name is Kurds and Kurds runs the company's inner station, which is deep in the jungle. So the chief accountant hails Kurds or appreciates Kurds as a first class agent who has a long way to go in the company's expedition in Africa. Easy? With this, let's go to company's central station. Marlowe hikes with 60 people whom he calls pilgrims to reach to company central station. Disappointed, basically he had to get his ship at the central station, but he's very disappointed because he finds out that his ship is wrecked due to an accident. The ship is not ready to move. The ship is in a bad shape. So at the company's central station, Marlowe lives for three months trying to repair the ship. Why so much time? Due to lack of tools, lack of equipments. And during this time, he learns more about Kurds. Kurds is a man of impressive abilities. Kurds is noble. Kurds is ambitious. He also learns that Kurds is keeping quite ill lately. Are you understanding how this novella is a quest literature? The protagonist or the hero here is Marlowe, who has to reach to companies inner station. He's on a quest to meet Kurds. He's hearing about this person again and again, Kurds, Kurds, and he wants to meet him. Look here at this steamship. Can you see? And look at all these people, you know, they are the pilgrims, as I told you, the people who are accompanying Conrad on his journey. Sorry, Marlowe, not Conrad. But actually, I'll tell you, even Conrad was in Africa and that is how he wrote this novel, okay? This novel is loosely based on Conrad's real life experiences when he was in Africa. Okay, so you understood? This is a ship. Let's move on. Now, the company's central station is headed by a very selfish and corrupt general manager who cares about nobody, who cares only about money. This general manager has reached his position of power due to his manipulation of people and also his ability to withstand the terrible jungle diseases. Of course, when you are in the jungle, the diseases are going to be common. How your you know, genes or how your immunity fights against them that is what will decide your survival in the dense jungle forest of Africa, right? Now, it is here that Marlowe notices that the general manager has a disliking for Kurds, like how the chief accountant really liked Kurds, but general manager does not like Kurds, okay? With this, now let's change the setting to company's 
inner station, okay? Outer central inner station. Now the ship is repaired. Three months it took Marlowe to repair it. And then it took him another two months to reach the company's inner station or where Kurds works, called as the Kurds station, deep inside the jungle. He is accompanied by the general manager and many company agents who Marlowe calls pilgrims, okay? They are company agents, but they are natives, okay? They are blacks. Marlowe calls them native pilgrims because they carry staffs, just like religious pilgrims. Staffs is like a danda, okay? Now, this trip for Marlowe is most difficult. That is going from central to inner station. Why? He faced thick fogs. Natives attacked their ship with arrows because of which Marlowe's helmsman, you know who's a helmsman? A person who steers the ship. So he's a native. He is killed by a spear, you know, this attack. Huh. And with this, let's move to company's inner station. On the shore, Marlowe is greeted by a man who is a Russian trader. Who is this Russian trader? He is the only white man in Congo who does not want power or control over the jungle. He wears a jester-like multicolored padged jacket. Here the theme is greed. Like how the Russian is not greedy, but every other white man in Africa right now is greedy. Okay, understood? Now, this Russian trader talks highly of Kurds to Marlowe. Again, somebody is, you know, very impressed with Kurds. And, you know, this Russian trader has also nursed him back to health. Who? Kurds on a number of occasions. The Russian informs Marlow and others that Kurtz is alive but is severely ill. Now at this moment at the shore, the general manager, he goes to get Kurtz, whereas Marlow and the Russian, they have a chat. This chat is very important to understand. Here is where Marlow will finally have his final opinion about Kurtz, okay? The chat between Marlow and Russian. Russian tells Marlowe that Kurds is a man of great intelligence and ambition. He wanted to civilize the natives of Africa. He came here with a noble mind and a noble ambition, but maybe his ambition went too far. Kurds has made himself into a brutal and vicious god to the natives, performing the terrible rites of beheading them. You know, things which not a civilized person is expected to do. Kurds does all that. He has become a god of these natives. The Russian also tells Marlow that Kurds feels that the company wants to kill him. The company which has hired Kurds, of course, for his unsound ways. And it was Kurds only who ordered the attack on Marlow's ship, which killed Marlow's helm's man, right? And listening to all this, finally Marlow becomes skeptic of Kurds. He thinks that the African jungle and European mission of colonization and civilization has made Kurds mad. Here the theme is expectation versus reality and also failure of a quest, right? Easy? Now, look here. This is just a scene how the blacks or the natives of Africa, they were treated, okay? This is a scene from the novel. Let's move now with the entrance of Kurds finally. Kurds arrives from the inner station on a stretcher. He cannot even walk, accompanied by the natives who worship him and also by an African woman who is maybe his mistress. Kurds looks like a ghost. These natives look at Marlowe and general manager and they want to kill these people. They attack them, but Kurds calms them down and they just sit down. The natives accompany this ghost-like Kurds inside the cabin of the ship. Kurds now has to be taken back. He is severely ill. Okay? So Kurds is in the ship. Marlow is like, he does not know what to say, what to do. It is night time. And Marlow sees that Kurds is crawling back to the native camp. Maybe Kurds does not want to go back. The company is calling Kurds back. So at this, Marlow threatens to shoot Kurds, saying that, you know, uh, you have to come back with us. And Kurt says, don't shoot me. I could not accomplish more. What does Kurt mean by this? I could not accomplish more. You know, is this what he wanted to become a god to the native Africans? Or is this what his heart has become? Heart of darkness? 
Now, the next day, the steamer sets off to the journey back down the river, which means from the inner station, they'll go to, go to the center, then to the outer station. Kurds is being taken back, but he is too ill to survive. And he soon dies. Yes, he dies on the ship. Kurds' dying words are very important. Listen, the horror, the horror. And when Marlowe hears these words, he wonders, is this the horror inside Kurd's heart or is this the horror he saw in the world around? The general manager's boy, when he hears about Kurd's death, announces his death to the crew with these lines, Mr. Kurds or Kurds is dead. Before dying, however, Kurds hands over his private and personal documents to Marlowe for safekeeping. And on Kurd's death, Marlowe feels that all of Kurd's talent and morality was Hollow at the core. Here the theme again is hollowness of colonialism. Marlowe also falls ill in the jungle, let me tell you, on the return journey going. He falls ill severely, but he survives. He does not die, unlike Kurds. And here is where, look at this portrait of Kurds. You know, look at him. Setting is Europe one year later. Marlowe returns to Europe and many people want Kurd's papers, which Kurds had handed over to Marlowe, but he does not give it to them. He just gives those, you know, professional papers to a journalist saying that, see if you can print them, but he keeps the private papers to himself. And after one year, Kurds intended or his fiance, that is the girl who had to marry Kurds if Kurds returned to Europe, okay, she comes to meet Marlowe. And like Kurd's aunt, this girl also believes in Europe's colonial mission. This intended loves the late Kurd still. She calls him a great man and asks Marlowe what Kurd's last words were. What were his wa last words? Can you tell me? The horror, the horror. But Marlowe does not say this. Marlowe says, Marlowe lies to the intended that Kurd's last words were your name. <laughs> present, again, let's come to the present. Remember the present, the novella began on the Thames River, England, where five people are sitting, including Marlowe and narrator. On the ship in the Thames, Marlowe completes his story to the other four people and be quiet. The narrator stares out from the ship into the darkness of the Thames River, into the heart of an immense darkness. Done. Points to ponder, please, very important. During scramble for Africa, one of the most brutal European colonies was Belgium. Its colony in Africa was called the Belgian Congo, and it was the private property of the Belgian King Leopold II. In 1890, Joseph Conrad actually worked on a steamship in the Belgian Congo and Heart of Darkness is loosely based on Conrad's experiences there. Easy? So scramble for Africa means when Europe was fighting for its share over Africa. I want, I want, you know, they did not want to civilize anybody. They just wanted money. They were greedy, the Europeans, right? Scramble for Africa. Next point to ponder. The 1979 film called Apocalypse Now is inspired by Heart of Darkness. Next, Mr. Kurtz or Kurtz is Dead became the epigraph of T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Men. And the last is Joseph Conrad's notable works, you should know. First novel is Almayer's Folly of 1894. Then The Nigger of the Narcissus of 1897. Heart of Darkness, 1899. Lord Jim of 1900, Typhoon of 1902, Nostromo of 1904, The Secret Agent of 1907, and Under Western Eyes of 1911. Easy? Listen to it again. This is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I am Hina from Team Walat, and I wish you a merry, 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 merry Christmas. God bless you. Bye-bye. Take care.